explain what a confidence interval is and how to compute a confidence interval for a mean. Imagine you want to measure the throughput that you get over your internet connection at home. You do an experiment 10 times, you send during 100 seconds as many bits as your line allows, and you measure how much gets through. You get 10 measurements that have displayed here, 7.92 megabit per second, 7.76, etc. So the first question is how to summarize these measurements. I can take, for example, the mean. Here I have 10 measurements. I compute their mean by taking the sum and divide by 10. I obtain 8.056 megabit per second. If I do the experiment again in the same conditions, I find a different set of 10 numbers. We see that the result we obtain even after computing the mean or the average is variable. There is some randomness in it. The goal of the confidence interval is to quantify the uncertainty we have on this value, on the mean, that results from the fact that there is some randomness in it. In this case, we expect the uncertainty to be small, and we will see in a second how to make exact sense of this. So the problem is to quantify the uncertainty we have about the mean, x bar, that we have computed from our n data points, x1, xn. This is apparently a very difficult problem, because we have only those 10 points and quantifying the uncertainty, in theory, would require being able to replay the experiment as many times as we want. But we won't be able to do that. So statisticians have invented a method for that. They imagine that the data we have has been produced by a simulator. It's not nature, but a simulator that produced it and we want to say something about the simulator. In this case, we imagine the simulator is simply sampling the data from a theoretical distribution. There is a probability distribution that I call F, and this probability distribution has some theoretical mean. It's the mean I can compute if I know exactly the parameters. For example, if it's a Gaussian distribution, the mean is its central value. But we don't necessarily assume it's Gaussian, we just assume it's some distribution. And what we imagine we want to do is to estimate the mean m. So there is a game here. There is the simulator that's playing against us by revealing to us only the data points x1, xm. And out of this, we want to say something about m with quantification of the uncertainty. That is the framework that statisticians use to compute confidence intervals. Now, obtaining a confidence interval for the mean means being able to say something about the mean that is true with a large probability, for example, with 95% probability or with 99% probability. Indeed, in this statistical approach, we will never be able to be 100% sure about the parameters of this hidden simulator. To obtain such a confidence interval for the mean, we use the central limit theorem. This is a theorem in probability that says that if you take the average of n independent samples drawn from some distribution, you have a random quantity that, when n is large, tends to be approximately distributed like a Gaussian random variable. More precisely, this theorem holds if the variance of the unknown distribution f, or unknown simulator, is finite. The statement in the theorem requires to be able to know the variance sigma square or some estimate of it. Now we know that the Gaussian distribution is located with probability 95% in the interval that ranges from the mean minus 196, the standard deviation, 
and the mean plus 196, the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. 196 is, in some sense, a magic number that comes from the Gaussian distribution. Now let's return to our mean x bar, x bar, which is 1 over n, x1 plus etc. plus xn. The variance of x bar is sigma squared divided by n, so if I apply the bounds I have for the Gaussian distribution, I find that x bar is between m plus 196 sigma divided by square root of n and m minus 196 sigma divided by square root of n. And this holds with probability 95%. We have obtained an interval for x bar, but that's not what we're interested in. What we want is an interval for m, the parameter of the hidden simulator. But that's easy to obtain by massaging the left equation. We get immediately that m is less than x bar plus 196 sigma over square root of n, and similarly on the left. So we're almost done. We have obtained an interval for m, almost because we don't know sigma. How can we get sigma? Well, we can't get it exactly. However, statisticians recommend to estimate it by using the sample standard deviation formula, which is equal to sigma square hat is 1 over n minus 1, the sum of the x minus x bar squares. So it is the average of the square deviation to the mean. Notice, however, that we use 1 over n minus 1 instead of 1 over n in this formula. It's not so important if n is large, and this is anyhow an estimation, not an exact formula, but there are good reasons for having 1 over n minus 1 rather than 1 over n. For our set of 10 data points, we obtain sigma hat equal 0 0.318 megabit per second. Therefore, the uncertainty given by this formula about the mean is 196 sigma hat divided by square root of n gives 0 0.197 megabit per second. Putting all of this together, we can say that with probability 95%, the unknown mean m of our simulator is between 8056 and plus or minus 0197. This is the confidence interval for the mean. So we have obtained a formula for computing the confidence interval for the mean. First, we compute the sample mean, x bar. Then we need to compute an estimation of the standard deviation, sigma hat, and we can say that the mean of the data, the theoretical mean, the mean of the unknown simulator, the mean we would see if we would know everything about nature, is given by the formula x bar plus or minus 196 sigma hat divided by square root of n. Notice the square root of n in the denominator here. It makes sense. It means that if n gets very, very large, the size of the confidence interval reduces. If you do more and more measurements, and if they all come from the same simulator, then you will get a more and more accurate estimation of the mean. If n is infinite, in theory, you could exactly get the mean. This formula makes a number of assumptions that we need to be aware of. The first one is that the data has been generated by a simulator that draws repeatedly from the same distribution f. Repeatedly here implicitly means independently. That means, for example, we are not repeating the same value many times, and the draws are without any influence on each other. In practice, this is going to be true if the conditions under which we do the experiment are the same, and if all so-called hidden factors are properly randomized. The second point is that we have to be able to make the assumption that the central limit theorem applies, which means that n is large. Now, is 10 large enough? Perhaps yes, perhaps no. A related point, the third point, is that to apply the central limit theorem, we need to be able to 
make sure that the variance of the original distribution is finite and can be estimated. Let's see another example. Assume that the data I have measured is the same as previously, except for the first one. Instead of 7.92 megabit per second, I have found 792 megabit per second. Of course, this is physically impossible. My internet connection cannot give me 790 megabit per second, so that's a measurement error of some kind. But still, let's assume this is real data and we apply the formula we've seen before. Or, to put it differently, let's assume we were not careful enough to screen the data carefully and we apply the method. We will find an average X bar of 86 megabit per second. So in average, I get 86 megabit per second. Of course, this is plain wrong. We see that the values are around 8 and just one is an outlier and has corrupted the mean. And if we apply the uncertainty bound given by the theory I presented a few minutes ago, we find an uncertainty interval of plus or minus 153 megabit per second at confidence level 95%, which means the true mean is somewhere between minus 67 and 239 megabit per second. Of course, this is ridiculous. The value must be positive. The interval is, of course, much larger than is physically possible. But this is illustrating one of the potential problems of the confidence interval for the mean. It is that it is not robust. Here it is not robust to one outlier. In other words, the formula for the confidence interval for the mean works only if we can be reasonably sure that the central limit theorem works in particular if the assumption on the variance being not infinite holds. Variance not being infinite means in practice that the data points that we have, the x, x1, x xn, are in some sense close together. They are not varying wildly. Like in the black example, where all values were around 8 and 1 was 100 times larger. In such a case, the formula we have will be misleading. Fortunately, it is possible to avoid this problem by computing confidence intervals not for the mean, but for the median. But this we will see in another video.